Now, I will show you how simple it is to create a PDB inside a CDB. What is a PDB? It is an independent database. It's a completely independent database that acts like a normal standalone database. And how do we create it? Because we don't know or there is no reference point. What Oracle will do is it will copy everything from the seed. So seed is like a template database which is created. So Oracle will copy everything from the seed and it will create a pluggable database for you. So the command is so simple, create pluggable database, PDB1, I think that's a good name that we can give. And then, okay, I think the user, I should explain a little bit. Now, when you are creating a pluggable database, you need to define a database level administrator or PDB level admin. Where is our slide? This one, no, this one, no, this one. Remember I mentioned like you have PDB admins. So we need to define a PDB level administrator right while you are creating the PDB. So admin user, you need to give the exact username. So PDB admin is the generic term that is used by people. You can also use it and then define the password identified by PDB admin. We are going with the same password. <clears throat> now that you are creating a admin user, you need to define or give the admin privileges to the PDB admin. So what you do is you give a role or you assign a role and the role will be a DBA role. So we want that this PDB admin is a DBA for the PDB1 database. So PDB admin can do anything like in a normal database. So remember guys, this hierarchy, this does not work reverse. A CDB admin can administer a PDB database. A PDB admin can administer the users inside the database, but reverse, it does not work. All right. A PDB admin cannot, let's take if PDB admin is de defined, a PDB admin cannot connect to the container and start working. No, the PDB admin is an administrator for that particular pluggable database and the user authority is limited to that particular PDB. <laughs> All right, at this stage, there is one more parameter that you need to define and that is create file disk. This will define where exactly you want to create or store the data files for this PDB. And I'll talk about data files in some time. You might say like when we are creating an empty PDB, what are those data files? All right, we'll come in a minute. So create file destination, give the location where you want to create the <clears throat> PDB files. So maybe you will create under U01. And then I think we'll just put it under U01 and Oracle will create the folders, or I would rather give it a descriptive name, PDB slash. All right. This is how simple it is. And let us hit enter. <clears throat> what is the mistake we did? Maybe uh, create pluggable database pdb1 admin user pdb before that guys i'll quickly create the directory otherwise this will create a problem any which ways so under u01 the word identified is i think that is not correct yeah yeah uh, meanwhile i'm also creating the uh, directory so create pluggable database pdb1 admin user pdb admin identified by pdb admin role equal to we want to give and guys sometimes we also have a pdb uh, underscore admin role remember the pdb admin role is not the not like a sys user role inside the pdb so as a sys db if you want a sys db role for the pdb admin 
then try to give the DBA role. Don't give PDB admin. So sometimes people give that PDB admin and they will complain like, hey, I'm not able to do this inside the PDB. Create file dist, give the location and u01 slash PDB is the location and hit enter. Now what's happening at this stage? Exactly at this stage, what Oracle is doing is we have the container, we have the seed, and from the seed PDB, Oracle is copying the data files to our PDB1 location, the location that we have defined. <clears throat> now, what are these data files? So, of course, I mentioned that we have system, sysox, and other data files at CDB level. At PDB level also, we have system, sysox, table spaces. Now, can you guys guess why there is a requirement for system and sysox table spaces at PDB level? And you can also cross question me saying like, Arun, what is the point of consolidation if we are still having system and sysox table spaces at every PDB level? Come on guys, what's your hypothesis on this? Every PDB will still have system and sysox table spaces. Why do you think they exist or exist over there? Okay, meanwhile, can you see? Pluggable database created. It is so simple. So at this stage, when you issue create pluggable database and you give the details, it will automatically copy from the seed PDB. You need not say that copy it from the seed PDB or clone the seed PDB, nothing like that. You just specify and your PDB is created. So guys, to answer this question, it's very simple. The PDB level system in Sysox will hold the uh, <clears throat> performance views which are required only in relation to that PDB. So like DB underscore users, at PDB level, we also need those DB underscore users view to look at the users inside the PDB. Same goes with uh, DB underscore data files. So all those views which are related to PDB level, they will be inside the system. And Sysox will hold the performance related reports within the PDB. So technically these system and sysox table spaces are very small. They are limited to that PDB. But at the database level system and sysox, they will hold the details about entire Oracle binaries. And that's why when you try to upgrade, you are upgrading the system and sysox at the CDB level. Nothing is being done at PDB level. So you can imagine these system and sysox table spaces inside PDBs are very small, which hold little details about the PDBs. The main and the major details regarding the entire database version and other stuff, it is at the CDB level system and sysox table spaces. Okay. Uh, Arun, a small question. Yeah, go ahead, Surikan. Uh, if we remove this pluggable database from CDB and uh, we mm -hmm. treat it as a non-CDB database, like that can be possible? Uh, <laughs> I think uh, nobody does that because people are converting their non-CDBs to PDBs. Yes, you can do it. There are methods you can simply do it. But now I'm curious why this kind of question never came to my mind. So people okay. are consolidating their databases into PDBs. And now that you say PDB to CDB, of course you can do it. Uh, if you tell me, definitely I can come up with a method that you can do it. But uh, I'm just curious, like I never got this kind of a... Crazy. No, why I thought is because uh, you said they are maintaining a local sysox and sys, sys table space. Then I just but thinking again, it's it very small. You need not worry about it. It's it's very small. I'll show you. So, uh, guys, now that we have created the pluggable database, let us run our favorite queries. Right? What are our favorite queries? Select name, comma, open underscore mode, comma, cdb from v dollar database. Right? <clears throat> Sorry, select name, comma, open mode, comma, CDB 
from V$ database. This is our favorite query. It tells that we are connected to CDB database and it's a container database. Now let us do show con underscore ID. That is the container ID. We are connected to one show con underscore name and we are at the root container. Now let us look at select name comma open underscore mode from V$ containers. My favorite view. <clears throat> column name for a 20 all right what do you see so we have a cdb root container we have pdbc container and then pdb1 container is also created if you see guys <clears throat> this pdb1 is right now closed and this is a little confusing some of you might get confused you might say why it is mounted see as i already mentioned the control file is at root or the container root container level i mean pdbs do not have their own specific control files so this mounted over here it means it is closed technically it's a very confusing term because see none of the pdbs they uh, they don't have their own control files so that means you cannot take a pdb into a mount stage correct so this is a wrong term i think used by uh, oracle i think they should have mentioned it as closed so this pdb if it is mounted it simply means users can't connect to this particular database so how do you open this database <clears throat> so alter pluggable database pdb1 and then give this option as open so what this will do is it will open this pluggable database all right so this pluggable database is right now open for users now let us see what our containers say and what is the status of our containers the root container read write pdb seed will always be in read only mode and then we have pdb1 which is read write mode correct Guys, what I'll do is I'll quickly give you one more example. Let us create another PDB so that I can give you a couple more examples. Now, where is our creation command? Yeah, let me copy this one. Let's copy to notepad. All right. So this is the create pluggable database command, right? Mm. Now there are a couple of issues with this kind of command. The issue is, I would not call it as issue. I would actually take you towards more options that are available when you create a pluggable database. The thing is this kind of PDB does not define how much space this DB and this entire database can take on the disk. Technically, what happens if you create a PDB like this, it can take unlimited space on the disk and it can expand to whatever limits it wants to. So you also have a parameter that is known as storage. So while you create a PDB, you can define storage as max size 2 GB. So even if the pluggable database admin, uh, even if they try to add more data files in order to create big table spaces that will be limited so that won't be possible at this stage because the storage has been limited by the root or the container root admin so guys <clears throat> earlier remember it it was sys dba role but now your role will change it will be cdb admin that's the role container database admin that you work on so a container database admin is the person who is able to administer the entire root container along with all the pluggable databases. So this is one parameter and let us assume you are creating a pluggable database and you also want to create a new table space inside the new pluggable database and also define it as the default table space for all the users who will be using the PDB. So what you can do is you can also use this parameter called as default table space.
So this parameter will create a new table space within the PDB while you're creating. And you can also, this default table space, whenever a user who uses this PDB one database, all the tables that they create, they will go inside the default table space. So ultimately, if we tend to use all this, we can come up with create pluggable database PDB one, I think this time we'll be creating PDB two, and then we'll define an admin user. Once you define the admin user, then we can say that storage will say max size equal to 10 GB. We do not want this database to grow beyond 10 GB in the entire container. And then we can also def, uh, define a default table space. And then you can give like a user default TBS and then data file. How you create a new table space, that's how you need to define. And under slash user one slash PDB, I think I'll just create a quick data file. Aaron, don't forget to correct that database name. You have to maintain a PDB one. I didn't change it. Sorry. Thank you. User underscore default TBS zero one dot TBF. So once you define, then you definitely need to give the size for this table space. Let's take, we'll say 50 MB is the size of this file at this stage. And you can all, of course, we need to define the role also. So this role I'm picking up from here. I'll put it after this and create file destination. Of course, we need to define because that's where all our data files, the main system and sysocs related to the PDB2 will reside. So I will run this command and then we'll see if PDB2 is created or not. Looks like it's creating our PDB2 database. So let us run this command. Can you see guys how quick it is? It's pretty simple. And as we know, PDB2, it is mounted. So alter pluggable database PDB2 open. And this will open the PDB2 database. 